tick tock on the towel power clock correct time time for the big boss with the hot sauce you see that's me i am the gator with the heater heater being all the record i play the single rotten bop and chip bop once again, let me say greetings and salutations to the entire population of this here fantastic nation. My name is Nikita, and you're on the air with Nail Sedaka. You're on the air with Bo Diddley, but to kick things off now, let's go back to the year 1962. Let's kick it off with the Gita Gold Dancers, and do you remember? story this young lady has. She starts out as a babysitter for the young girl that writes it, Carol King. And in 1961, when Carol King wants to start her own label, she says to Eva, she says, come on over here. Can you sing? Eva says yes. The rest is all history. Hello. Come on, and I know you know how to do the locomotion. Come on, come on, this is just the beginning. We're gonna have to leave you momentarily, but when we come back with the Eva Gold Dancers, you're gonna see and hear the fantastic Bo Diddley, so don't you dare touch that dial. Mississippi, and when you talk about a cat that got down, he certainly did get down. From 1955, let me take you into the 60s. But in the early part of the 50s, this gentleman that you're hearing right now, a fellow by the name of Hank Ballard, begins his career the same time that Bo Diddley begins his career. But in 1955, he's doing working with me, Annie. Annie had a baby. And then in 1959, he has a hit with this particular song.
1952 to 1959, this young man, Hank Ballard, is the top winner on the R&B charts. Working with me, Annie. Annie had a baby. In 1959, before he does this song, he writes the twist. He records it, but it is not the national hit by Hank. It is the national hit by Chubby Checker. The Dieter Gold Dance is getting down with Mr. Hank Ballard. You know, by the way, that Hank Ballard wrote almost all of the songs that he recorded. Now, when you talk about a songwriter, when you talk about an artist, it is my pleasure right now to take you with me to the Dieter Phonovision and introduce you to my buddy, Mr. Neil Sedak. Neil, it's the Dieter. The Gita, how are you doing? I'm fine, Neil. Uh, how do you feel? I feel great. How are you doing, Jared? Wonderful, my buddy. You know, between all of the years of writing and singing, how many years has it been all together? I'm in it 35 years, and they said it wouldn't last. Mm, 35 years. How old were you when you began? I was uh, 13 when I started writing songs, and I was 19 when the first record came out, The Diary. Oh, yes, I remember that. As a matter of fact, the original version was by little Anthony, and then you recorded it later on. But at the very beginning, Neil, you originally were singing with a group, I believe, out of uh, Brooklyn, huh? I had a group that I organized in Lincoln High School in Brooklyn called The Tokens. Uh -huh. And it was, um, we sang at all the local bar mitzvahs yeah. and weddings and, and all the sock hops. And of course, The Tokens went on to do right. The Lion Sleeps Tonight right. after I went on. Yeah. As a matter of fact, one of the great songs that they did tonight, I Fell in Love. You also, besides singing, take time out to write for other groups in the 50s. Who were some of the groups uh, that you were writing for back then? I started to write for Ahmed Erdogan and Jerry Wexler's artists on Atlantic Records. We, uh, we wrote for Laverne Baker, oh, yeah. Clyde McFadden, uh, uh, The Clovers, The Cardinals, uh, lots of good old groups. Uh, I, those were the very best. But tell me, see if you can remember the first hit record that you wrote. First hit record was Connie Francis, Stupid Cupid, Stupid. in 58. <laughs> how about, I got one for you. How about Lipstick on Your Collar, The Other Side is Frankie. And how did you get the idea? Whose idea was that to write Frankie? Uh, Connie came up with the title for Frankie Avalon. She thought that would be a great... Uh, uh, big massive hit and she was right Frankie my darling and then we did Where the Boys Are for Connie and uh, Fallen uh, which uh, was one of the starts for me
wonderful. Frankie, my darling, Neil Sedaka, he writes it for Frankie Avalon. I'm going to take a little break. When I come back, we're going to continue with Neil, and we're going to take you to the year 1959, and the Gita Gold Dancers will dance to a top ten record he wrote called O'Carroll. song and you're back with yours to the Gator and I am talking with my buddy Neil Sedaka on the Gator phone. Neil, uh, 58 you are writing for other artists and in 59 you become a bona fide singing star. Whose idea though was it to change you from writing songs and then say well go into the studio and do your thing? Uh, Don Kirshner and Al Nevins were my managers and publishers and they brought me to RCA Victor. Steve Scholes, who brought Elvis to RCA, signed me. And the first song I actually wrote for Little Anthony and the Imperials to follow up Tears on My Pillow. It was called A Diary, and that was the first one for me on RCA Victor Records. I, I remember that. How many songs, all told, have you written and recorded? Oh, Carol, Happy Birthday, Sweet Sixteen, Stairway to Heaven, Calendar Girl, which is going to be a picture with Jason Priestley. Big picture this year called Calendar Girl. They're going to use my song. And, uh, of course, Breaking Up is Hard to Do, Next Door to an Angel. I had ten hits in a row. Mm, marvelous songs. But then in the early part of the 60s, you stop recording, but you continue to write for other artists. Why was that? Because the record stopped selling, the Beatles were popular, and uh, rather than just put out records that would sit on a shelf, I wanted to go out and uh, uh, be quiet and write for others. Hmm. But you know, it's interesting, you come back in the 70s with a song that was a gigantic hit for you in the 50s, all right? Breaking up is hard to do. But you change the feel on that, you know. Interesting. I sang that on stage, and it always went great as an encore. And Lenny Welch, who had just done Since I Fell For You, right. uh, asked me for a new song. And I said, wait a minute, I like Breaking Up Is Hard To Do Slow. Uh -huh. And Lenny Welch recorded it and put it out. It was an R&B hit. Nobody remembers the record. And then I did it in 76, wow. and I had a hit record again. That is incredible, because I remember the fast version, and I'm sure you folks remember the fast version, but it was a gigantic hit, the slow version, for Neil Sedaka. Did you always want a career in show business? I always wanted it. I knew deep down in my bones that I wanted it. I knew I had a, a remarkable voice, uh, and this was something that my father was a taxi driver in New York City and worked very hard, and I wanted to, I wanted nice things. What do you say to a young songwriter today who wants to get into the business that's completely different than it was when you were writing songs back in the 50s? Well, it, it's more difficult today than it was when I started, but I would say to, if they write songs, make a demo record, demo tape of the song, send it out, to a record company or an artist that's up for recording and actually to um, to keep going with it. It's, it can be discouraging, but I think a great talent cannot be kept down. They have to come to the fore eventually. It takes time, I agree. Out of all of the artists that you recorded, out of all of the songs, your favorite? Tony Tennille, Love Will Keep Us Together, 1976. 
was the uh, Song of the Year Grammy. Uh, it was a great, uh, great, great uh, rendition. Your favorite song that you wrote? My favorite is Laughter in the Rain because it was responsible for the comeback. It's a magic song, very, very uh, exciting song. All right, my buddy. I know you got to leave. I just want to thank you for sharing and just hanging out with the Gita and the kids here on, on the air. Thank you, my buddy. Gita, thank you. We're survivors. Keep on, and uh, you've given great pleasure yourself, and we're going to go on with it. My main man, Mr. Neil Sedaka. What were you doing in 1957, huh? Well, in 1957, Jimmy Dorsey records his last record, which is a hit for that year. And we're going to let you see our Gita Gold Dancers do a little jitterbug to a song called J.D.'s Boogie Woogie Diggits.
of Mr. Chuck. And of course, guess what? It's all good things must come to an end, so must this show. I got to thank my buddy Neil Sedak for spending some time with us. And I got to thank you for making it with yours truly the gear of the big boss for the big hot sauce. Until we do it again, and of course, don't forget, same time, same place. Next week, this is the Gator with a reminder at all times you keep on rocking because honestly, truly, in life, you really only rock once by, y'all.